I'm Samuel Vargas. On February 19th, I'll be fighting for the Canadian title. I'm originally uh, from uh, Colombia, okay. and uh, that's where I grew up. I was uh, 15 years old when I came here. I enjoy a lot of sports, but I never, I never uh, had the chance to box. I was interested in fighting, but never, never had the opportunity to box. I happened to meet up with my, my now coach, uh, Chris Johnson, and ever since then, he started, I started, he started teaching me, so here I am. Well, the training <clears throat> on a weekly basis, I just, uh, every day, I just, you know, early, wake up early and run. And then uh, sometimes I go to my strength conditioning coach, and then uh, we, we, do, where we do a lot of explosive work, uh, weights and uh, plyometrics. That, and then I'll come to Boston gym and spar or do heavy, heavy back work or whatever my coach demands me to. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, every, everything, uh, for every fight we have a game plan, right? But uh, you know, it's pretty much based on the on the the conditioning part of it. It's pretty much the same thing. And then you know, the game plan in the ring, we we go over with coach, and uh, you know, we make adjustments. Like you have to make adjust adjustments for every fight, so you eventually become a better fighter. So when it comes to friends, here are my friends in the gym. So I don't really have friends. I don't have I don't have time to be with my friends. That I enjoy uh, next to boxing and spending time with my son. That's that's. First thing that I think of when I'm not boxing. That's the, that's the only thing that gives me joy besides boxing, really. Just spending time with my son and uh, seeing a smile on his face. That's what, that's what I do. That's, that's what I do. That's what I do. It's kind of funny. Uh, <clears throat> when people get to know me, they think they think I'll be like a very aggressive, or I don't I don't seem like an approachable guy to, that per se. But when they actually get to know me, you know, they they say sometimes they can picture me in the ring. So it's it's. It goes different every way. Uh, my future goals is my my one my, my future goal is become a world champion. That's what I that's what I do this for. That's what I want. In a few years, I would like to uh, have a be on the field, of course, and hold uh, hold a WBA title or or any any belt that will take me to a world championship. So that were comments from Sammy Vargas. He's undefeated. He'll be vying for the NABA Canadian Welterweight Championship right now. His opponent, a fan favorite inside the Hershey Center and definitely around circles in southern Ontario, Tibor Broch. Let's uh, familiarize ourselves, Corey, with Tibor Broch. What do you know about this gentleman? Well, let's take a look at some, uh, some footage uh, from Tibor. You know, he won the, the CPC Welterweight title last time out against Justin Fountain. Since then, he was sort of curiously stripped of the belt, but tonight we have the NABA Canadian welterweight title on the line. The main point is that he is the lineal Canadian welterweight championship. That's what we're fighting for. All three of his losses, though, and this is a key point, they, they came fighting above welterweight. He's looked a lot more comfortable fighting at 147, and he certainly has the experience advantage out here tonight. 28 years old with a record of 6-3-4, and four, two wins by way of knockout. He's riding an undefeated 7 fight undefeated streak mighty Tibor Broch set for action here inside the Hershey Center and a lot of fans came to see him tonight Corey yeah he certainly uh, packs in a, a good crowd and let's face it as well two of those losses I mentioned not only were they above welterweight but two of them were against Phil Boudreau who's a very accomplished Olympian and he was a slick southpaw as well a very different style matchup here tonight so things are looking good for Tibor Broch you have to be happy with the style matchup if you're in team Broch Starting things off here, let's go inside the ring to our ring announcer, Thomas Triver. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome to the ring, fighting tonight out of the red corner, Sammy Vargas. So Sammy Vargas about to make his way to the ring, 7-0, oh, 1 KO to his name. He is from the GTA, even though we are in the GTA. He is definitely not the fan favorite in this fight, but uh, Billy, for a situation like this where Sam Vargas is undefeated and he has a chance to claim a championship against such an overwhelming fan favorite, I mean, how does that play into a fight like this? I think he's used to it. Nerves are going to come into effect for both these guys, but you know they've been around. They know what they have to do. Well, Vargas has a good camp around him, fresh off of their Victor Lupo victory. We see. 
Chris Johnson. Yeah, he is in that Hennessy. Kid Steve Molitor. He is in that Hennessy Sports camp, of course. Uh, Logan Cotton McGinnis part of that camp as well. Those two get in the ring together and spar quite often. So he has a great team around him. He trains in a very professional environment, and he trains like a real prize fighter. He's looking to make this his living. And seven wins in his first uh, in his first year bodes well. The last time he was in action at the Hershey Center, he had a unanimous decision win over Ryan Wagner. That was September, and this is now. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's big welcome to either. the so ring, fighting tonight out of the blue corner, mighty Tibor Broch. And the fans go wild inside the Hershey Center in anticipation of their champion, mighty Tibor Broch. Customized team song. Yeah, a very elongated entrance here, <laughs> sort of in the uh, in the spirit of uh, of Prince Nassim, of Jean Pascal. Lots of mixtures into the song there, but you know, you see the uh, the headband there, Arda Tibor Brosha, a very accomplished martial artist as well. Also a very good hockey player as he was growing up. And if this were a hockey game, Tibor Brosha is looking to dump and chase in this fight. He's making the look. He's looking to make this a physical fight. Get into the trenches. And really, Sammy Vargas is looking to do the same thing, so I don't see how this wouldn't be exciting. I hope for our sake that that's the case. Time now for our official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, this championship bout is being brought to you by United Boxing Promotions in association with Hennessy Sports, along with their great sponsors, Everlast and Forever Young, Inc. <laughs> it is scheduled for 10 rounds of boxing, and it will be for the vacant NABA Canadian Welterweight Championship. Our three judges assigned are Alan Davis, Kelly Zolnircheck, and William Boudhu. When the bell rings, our referee in charge, the third man in the ring will be Dave Dunbar. Introducing to you first to my left, fighting tonight out of the red corner. He's wearing black trucks and weighed in at 145 and a half pounds. Hailing from right here, Mississauga, Ontario, by way of Bogota, Colombia. He is undefeated with seven wins, and one of his seven wins come by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Sammy Vargas. And his opponent across the ring fighting tonight in the blue corner. He's wearing blue trunks with white trim and also weighed in at 145 and a half pounds. Also hailing from right here, Mississauga, Ontario. His professional record consists of six wins, three defeats, four draws with two wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mighty Tibor Broch. Belt line is here. Belt line is. Want to watch the holding? Want to watch the hitting? 
Watch your heads when fighting in close. You understand? Any questions for corner? Back to corners, gentlemen, come out of the bell. Billy, what do you make of uh, Sammy Vargas getting in Tibor Brosh's corner before the fight even started? It's funny. <laughs> would never have happened when I was fighting. He would have been knocked over the spot. Yeah? Oh, yeah. But he, Tibor's calm. This fight begins. Showmanship, you know. Tibor Brosh taking on Sammy Vargas. Tibor Brosh in the blue trunks. Sammy Vargas in the black trunks. Vargas, a native of Colombia, now calls Mississauga home, as does Tibor Brosh. Vargas got in his face before the bout. He's going to need to be in his face all night long if he wants to make this a victory and, and get some gold around his waist. Well, Tibor Brosh definitely uh, has roots in Mississauga. As you mentioned, the former hockey player uh, played double-A rep with the Mississauga Jets here in the greater Toronto area. Sporting Jets colors, I guess, sort of. No red, so, so to speak, so yes. to speak. Two good corner men at work. Of course, we see Chris Johnson again in Vargas's corner, but in Brosh's corner, Jerome Coffey, who fought Jeff Fennick in an absolute war for the IBF Bantamweight title back in 1985. So some quality trainers in both corners. Very good trainers. Good friends of mine as well. Me and Chris were Olympic teammates in 92. Both know their stuff. Definitely, as you both travel to Barcelona to represent Canada in the Summer Olympics, and that's something that Vargas has none of, no amateur experience whatsoever. Jumped right into the professional game. He's learning on the job. It's hard to do. And that's why I, I would assume it's very difficult to do. But I would assume that the amateur experience is a wealth of knowledge. But for a guy like Vargas, I mean, how, how, how quickly is he going to have to learn round by he's, round? He's learning as he goes. What's important if you have no amateur experience is to realize your strengths right away. Sam Vargas doesn't have knockout power. Without no. an amateur pedigree, he's not going to be a slick boxer. He needs to be a volume puncher. He needs to be a guy that doesn't punch particularly hard but throws a lot of them. I'm thinking of a guy like Zach Dia, a guy who will just be on top of you throwing punches. That's who he needs to be, and I think he's slowly trying to, slowly starting to find his identity. And a good left. Good left there. Connected. As we've hit over two minutes in this first round. Lots of good action so far from both individuals. There were some concerns about Vargas after his TV appearance on, uh, on ESPN against Michael Springer. He had a guy who was rushing in and basically he was waiting for openings. He wasn't creating them and that's what we were talking about in the Victor Lupo bout. He needs to be throwing punches and creating openings against t board Brooks. Under 20 seconds to go in round number one. There's a shot to the breadbasket by Tibor Broch. Got a bloody nose. Already, yeah, you're yeah. exactly right. Sammy Vargas has uh, blood trickling down his nose. Under 10 seconds to go in our first round. <laughs> Billy, how did you see that round? Uh, I had Tibor winning, can I? Little cleaner punches. Sammy's got to keep his hands up and his chin down. Likely the story that he's receiving from Chris Johnson in between rounds here. And Corey, the action was plentiful in this round, but it looked like Tibor did have a little bit more positional control. He did, and, and you know, some of that you could say is Vargas' fault. He can't be trying to box on the outside, as, as we'll see right here. The big overhand right that Vargas ate. I mean, that is a product of him trying to stand on the outside when he shouldn't. I mentioned that his best opportunity is to get in there and throw a lot of punches. And he needs to find that. Again, I talked about him finding his identity. He needs to create that identity if he wants that title tonight. The NABA Canadian Championship on the line. Round number two set to go underway. More fast jabs from Tibor Bros trying to keep Vargas at a distance. Vargas trying to flurry there, so that, that is definitely a good sign. One thing we haven't mentioned though, guys, the knee brace that Sammy Vargas is, uh, is wearing in this bout. At the last card at the Hershey Center, there was an absolutely bizarre 
four round exhibition bout against Ryan yes. Wagner with 20 ounce gloves and he fell during the bout and it was called a slip even though it was an exhibition match nobody came out to help Sammy Vargas and it probably furthered this injury that never should have happened in the first place very odd circumstance yes absolutely and the We're crowd here had no idea what was going on either <laughs> Unfortunately, that bow, yes, uh, demoted to an exhibition, but still, here we are now with full uh, uh, full implications in this contest, so that one firmly behind Vargas. Vargas trying to find that overhand right, but he's trying it too late. He's eating that jab before he can get it off. Not only that, but guys, Sammy Vargas, an undefeated fighter, 7-0. and And Billy, for somebody who's undefeated and, you know, that O is so important in boxing, I mean, how much does that factor into a fighter's game plan and, and does that ever become a concern? I don't think so. I think it's just a matter of winning. You want to win every fight. At this stage, these guys are both... Both nice green. There's there. that overhand right. They're both still learning. Uh, but, you know, I see a lot of mistakes in both these guys. Well, right now, Vargas is landing the cleaner shots. That right hand connecting with the side of the head. As Vargas, they continue to dirty box right here in the clinch. And the referee will step inside. You were talking about uh, mistakes in their game. What are you seeing, Billy? Oh, the, both hands are down. When they're jabbing, their right hand is down. They don't have it up inside their head. They can't block the hooks. They're just... They're just learn they're still learning. They have a lot to learn. But this is an even match. Well, one thing that Broch has on his side, he does have a good chin. We saw him against Frankie Abu, who's a, a common opponent for both these guys, and he won that fight. And there's a blatant headbutt, by the way. A blatant headbutt by Tibor Broch. And for some reason, the referee didn't stop to check Vargas as he was clearly wincing in pain from that headbutt. Well, that Very would, interesting. That, that would have created what I, I was mentioning with uh, with Broch. He won that fight with with uh, with a boot with a completely closed eye. So he certainly has some toughness and, and some grit about him. Evidently, he also has an element of dirtiness about him. Well, both men exhibiting dirty boxing right there. Both men not afraid to punch very close, very with, with inches separating them. As we see here now, both men ex exchanging jabs in the center of the ring with 10 seconds to go in the second round. Nice shot there by Sammy Vargas. Lands flush on the chin. He got hurt. He got shook up there. The referee will have to separate both fighters. But there's a good sign, Billy Vargas. When he gets hit, he wants to fight back. It ignites his fighting spirit when he took that right hand. Billy, how did you see that round? I have that one either way. Yeah, I don't know about that one. It could be even either way. How do you think? For me personally, Vargas I would have looked to like say Vargas looked a little bit sure. more to me. I was leaning that way into the right hand at the end, but you're probably right. The judges may lean that way because of the action, and you'll see as we see in the replay there, but it's not always what you saw very last. I just thought Vargas uh, controlled the belt. What about you, Corey? Well, there was that telling blow that you're going to see that you saw just a moment ago. Is that overhand right from Vargas, and he was looking for that in the first round. He found it this time. Again, the optics aren't on his side because he has a, he has a swollen eye from the headbutt and a bloody nose, but the fact is he was landing the clean and effective blows in this round. I would think that if you have to put it one way or the other, it's going to go to Sammy. And Sammy Vargas is the kind of guy that's a valiant fighter. He'll fight through any adversity, so he's not about to complain about the fact that he got headbutted and his eye might be a little bit more swollen than it was at the beginning of the bout. So we're seeing a situation here where Sammy Vargas is just exhibiting some real heart. Not taking anything away from Tibor Broch in this fight. That was a very good flurry near the end of the second round that really put him back he's in this get, fight. He's getting hit with jabs. Tibor can't miss him with the jab. Well, let's not forget that the victory that Broch had over Justin Fountain to win the welterweight title here in Canada came as a result of a technical decision. So that means it was a result of a headbutt. Let's, let's not sugarcoat it. It wasn't a punch that cut Fountain. It was a headbutt similar to the one we saw on the ropes. How he's getting away with it, I do not know. But thus far, he has. Oh, in this Landing fight, he has. Jab. Landing that jab, bro. In this fight, he has, but Tibor Broch, yes, keeping right. his opponent at bay thus far. Yeah. I'm thinking, guys, that Vargas is having some vision problems in his left eye. He's eating those jabs flush. Exactly. And you got hit with the right hand there and held on right away. Almost caught him with a cross right there as both men get tangled up. The 
This is our second of three championship fights here in the Hershey Center. Tibor Broch, Sammy Vargas, Canadian welterweight championship on the line. Later on tonight, Logan Cotton McGinnis defends his NABA lightweight championship against Hector Avila. And there's another shot there by Tibor Broch. He seems to be landing more as this fight progresses. Vargas looked for that left uppercut just a moment ago, and that's a good sign as well. It's still early, but the fact that he's looking for a little variety in his punches, a good sign if you're on team points. Billy, who's utilizing their jab better so far in this bout? Tibor is, for sure he is. Getting a flush. And again, that might have something to do with vision problems, but also, I mentioned, the fight against Michael Springer, Vargas has struggled with pressure throughout his career. Guys that come forward, no matter how conventional it is, he and seems he, a little erratic when they come in, and he wants to tie up. He's doing it again tonight. Tibor constantly throwing out that jab, trying to keep Vargas at bay. Lots of clenching, lots of dirty boxing in this crowd so far. That is the end of round number three. Tibor, to me, seemed the aggressor, Billy. Did you see it the same way? Sure I did. Pressure behind a nice hard stick jab. And as the replay comes up, guys, we're going to see something here. You're going to see the footwork of Sam Vargas. He's moving into that right hand, and maybe that has something to do with the headbutt that we saw, but he moves right into it. See two in a row from Tibor Bros. He's going to continue throwing it. And not to mention all those jabs that you were mentioning, Billy. Those are landing flush as well. This one's scheduled to go 10 rounds. Round number four upon us. here in the corner, Arda. I think some ice actually spilled on the map. As they attend to, yes, that's exactly what it is. Uh, one of the officials will clean up the ice, and this bout will continue. The problem you might see at a party, but not often in a boxing. No, no. I'll tell you what, though, Tibor's presence has, has made it a party atmosphere inside the Hershey Center, but Vargas is the one leading the action it. right now. He's trying to spoil it. It's right. As Vargas now, with a quick flurry early on. Both of them going to the body at the same time. I talked about identity at the beginning of the bout, and right now, Vargas has to realize that he can't be on the outside. He needs to be the one moving forward, and for the first time, it is actually him making those strides forward. Still not applying a lot of pressure, but at least he has Broch circling. And again, getting pushed back, and that's not somewhere you want to be against Broch. Vargas showing a little sign of frustration there as well. Not in liking the clinch one bit. Chris Johnson screaming for the overhand right. I could see Vargas thinking about it there for a second. The overhand right was the most effective punch that Vargas has thrown in this entire fight. The problem again, if you're Vargas, landing that overhand right is fine, but if you don't have knockout power, it's just one punch. It looks good. It looks good to the judges. But what are you going to do after that? Are you going to follow it up with the left hook? You should. Billy, do you think Vargas's vision is becoming an issue in this fight? I'm not sure. It doesn't seem to be. Now Vargas, there's a flurry. The spirit of a lion right there trying to just hold it on. And he gets knocked down. Well, he may have set a record for most inadvertent knockdowns <laughs> here at the Yeah, Hershey that one seems a little bit more legitimate than the one uh, two bouts ago. 
But there a moment ago, the flurry from Vargas, guys, I think that might be the key for Vargas, finding a use for that left hand. I mentioned Jerome Coffey being in the corner of Tibor, uh, Tibor Broch. He fought Kennedy McKinney, who of course is famous for that war against Mark An Marco Antonio right. Barrera, and that's what he did so well, that overhand right followed up with the left. If Vargas could do that, you know, those body shots, you don't need knockout power to get someone out of there with a body shot. Round four comes to a close. Both men go back to their corners, and I think both trainers look like they're really ready to give some more instruction to their fighters. Neither of them look to be too happy. Well, momentum is definitely on the side of Sam Vargas right now. He definitely turned it around. There wasn't a lot of picking and choosing of his punches in the, in the, in the way of Tibor Bros we saw. And there again, you look at Chris Johnson saying exactly what we've been talking about, guys. The overhand right followed up with that hook. And Tibor is open for it. There's nothing that's preventing him from doing it. Let's Here take are more a look replays. At yeah, exactly. As we take a look at it one more time, Billy, what uh, caught your eye in this round? Lots of flurries. And more so by Vargas. He won that round with the flurries. Good punches there by Vargas. He is landing right there. Nice flush shot to the nose of Tibor Broch as Vargas starts throwing punches in volumes. And that's really how he's going to be winning rounds in this fight, right, Billy? Definitely. And right there, a couple of shots traded at the beginning of round number six. A good flurry. Make that round number five. A good flurrying on the inside, and it's important not to forget again that Sammy Vargas is learning on the job. So a lot of what he's going to be doing is going to be crude. He's not going to have the, the polished punching form that other fighters will. Tibor seems to be well schooled in uh, in dirty boxing on the inside, are they? Oh, nice right hand. So, Billy, what do you think uh, Tibor needs to do now at this point where he's landing the jab, but is, is it a follow-up thing? What, what does he need to do? Well, he, he can, he can outbox Vargas by standing outside and popping that jab, but it's got to be quick and snappy. And Vargas seems to have his... his uh, the, the, better, the better the fight as he's inside, throwing flurries, he's busier, he's, he's aggressive. Fighting mentality of Tibor Broch may, be, may actually be a downfall because you mentioned Billy, he could probably make this very easy on himself and he's not. Exactly. Yeah. His Here style is being in the aggressive type of a fighter, but he's winning. He was winning earlier with the jab on the outside. Here in the fifth round of this contest, we're coming up to over halfway, over the halfway point of this fight. Vargas breathing through his mouth right now. Probably a product of exhaustion and that bloody nose. Who knows what the damage is to it. But making him move is paramount at this point for Broch. Make him continue breathing. Wear him out. Vargas seems to have the more energy of the two, or at least the more pep in his steps, so exactly. to speak. Definitely. If Tibor would just come, you know, snap out that jab, followed by a nice straight right hand, he's yet to do that. And the ref sort of got in the way of Tibor Broch there. Actually resulted in him eating a right hand. This is two fights tonight now. We've had some uh, referee impediments. Chris Johnson now calling for he's that left saying hook. Left he's hook, right it. hand. That's what he's saying. Left hook, right hand. Left hook, right hand. He keeps yelling it over and over and over again. And I think that's exactly uh, the verbal dose that Vargas is going to get when he goes back to his corner. Well, the fact is, if Tibor isn't jabbing, that left hook is there. You can throw it from range if you want. There are no tricks involved. If the guy's just standing there, you can unload whatever you feel like. Billy, what's on your scorecard thus far? Who do you have winning this fight? I have it three rounds to two, Vargas. I had him win in the last two rounds. 
Corey, as we take a look at the replay in round number five, this has really been a lot, perhaps more a lack of punches being thrown as opposed to what is being thrown in this Yeah, game. I mean, you don't want to talk, you don't, you never want to say that a guy's just giving a fight away because we should be giving credit to Sam Vargas right now. But the punch output from Roche has slipped so much yeah. that it's allowed Vargas, who isn't doing a, a, a grand amount himself, to get all the way back into this fight and be leading on your scorecard, Billy. So, you know, we do have to talk about what Tibor is doing to lose this fight. Uh, I agree. Definitely. It looks like at this point, like Sam is applying more punches. He wants to win. Well, Tibor he's doing what he has to do to win, I should say. Tibor Broch would be well advised to throw more punches now as Vargas one more time now hits the camera. That was another slip. Let's put this in perspective though. Remember, with no amateur background, this is the eighth fight that Samuel Vargas has ever been, been in in his life. Well, he seems to be handling the fans very well as he was egging them on as the fans are chanting Tibor, Tibor inside the Hershey Center in Mississauga. There's no question he has the mentality of a fighter. As the heart of a fighter as well. The skill set we'll see, but when it comes to the mentality and what it takes mentally to be a fighter, I think he's found it. Well, Tibor Brosh certainly holding his own in this fight, but definitely, as we said, a nice shot there, a nice right hand. That landed oh. And a nice hook there. Oh, and another hook. Tibor might be hurt. Both of them landing hooks as Vargas comes in now, but Brosh counter punches very well as well. Both of them. Well, this one's turned into a scrap. Tibor cannot find his way out of the corner. There he spins around. As Vargas is trying to tee up those shots, and now Brosh is trying to pick his shots as well, as both men finally into a clinch. Billy Vargas could have positioned himself better in the corner. He probably could have kept him there. Tibor didn't have to do a heck of a lot to spin out. Nice oh, shot by, by Tibor Brosh. That's what I was saying about the one-twos. But Vargas, he had him in there, he landed a flurry. Uh, it's, it, he's going to learn more fights. He's going he's gonna to figure that out. Tibor can't just load up the right hand, he has to pull the jab first. But Vargas' volume of punches is, is what's winning. Well, Vargas seems to be overreacting to that jab, and that's where that right hand can follow through. Right. But Tibor Gross seems to be more energetic and throwing more in this round than he has in the last few rounds, and landing some good combinations as well. So we'll have to see if that translates for him in this particular round as he gets caught right there over the left eye with a beautiful right hand. But he's getting hit with some right hands in this round. His eyes starting to swell up too. Well, the vision may essentially be neutralized by the end of this round as Vargas continues on. Gross making a crucial error in bringing that jab back to his waist and that's given an opening for that right hand. Round number six has seen action from both men landing solid shots as we go into the final 10 seconds. Nice uppercut there by Brosh. And you have to start questioning whether or not, or just how fatigued Tibor Brosh is, because I would think he's, exper he's an experienced enough fighter to know that's not how you jab. That has something to do with how tired you are, and Sammy Vargas is taking full advantage. As we take a look at this round one more time, lots of highlights to talk about, Corey. And there you see Vargas finding that right hand because Brosh is having trouble keeping his left up. And not only from that range, but on the inside. If Brosh can't keep his hands up, he's going to get trapped like this. And that was the sequence prior to that right hand where Vargas probably could have done more. He probably could have trapped him with better positioning. Broch easily spun out of the corner and got himself out of trouble, but he had Broch staggered twice in this round. Twice he had him in a corner. And that's something he's going to learn as he progresses as a fighter, how to finish. And he may have had two opportunities to do just that. Billy, how did you score that round? Vargas has won the last three. As we are into round number seven, who do you have winning? Vargas, four rounds to two. Four rounds to two for Vargas, according to Billy the Kid Irwin's scorecard. More commotion with that ice in the corner, by the way. They must really be trying to get that swelling down on Broach's face. 
More flurries from Vargas. Guys, the left eye of Broche is even worse than what Vargas's was, and that's the left eye that was closed shut against Frank. Nice Giroux. shot there. Right overhand right again by Sammy Vargas, and he keeps pressing the action. A nice left and right combination lands as Broche is on the defensive. Broche is on the run, but his legs do not look all the way there. Broche could make this a lot easier on him top of to just pop out that jab and take steps to the right. If he keeps moving to it, he's moving to his left now, but if you move to his right, Sammy would be off when he's trying to land that right hand because he'd be out of, the, out of range. But instead, he's making it very easy on so Sammy doesn't have to move at all to land that. He's standing right in front well, of him. Broche for the next See? three rounds needs to exactly. be to get out of the way. And now, it difficult. and now when he scores that jab, just take a step to the right. But if you watch him, what he'll do is he'll, he'll jab and he'll go to the left. Jab, go to the left. He's walking into the right hand. You see. Jim's going to the left right now. See how he's moving to the left? And that's a typical problem with novice fighters who get into a rhythm and don't get out of it. You have to learn that in the gym. The coach has to be on you all the time. It goes against your natural instinct to move to the right when you're jabbing for us right-handed fighters, but you have to consciously be aware of it. When a guy's setting you up with the right hand, you jab, throw the one-two, step to the right. It's going against the grain type of thing. Right now, Grosh has Vargas on the ropes, and he lands nice a nice cross right there. If Roche is tired, this is something that he can get away with. If he doesn't want to be moving, if he needs to get that air back in his lungs, just get on top of Sammy Vargas. Right now, this looks good to judges. It's not all that appealing, but the judges have to be taking notice. Well, this situation, Billy, who does it uh, appeal to more? Is it to Broche or is it to Vargas? For Broche, it looks better. He's the one who's putting the the aggressor. Neither of, them, neither of them are doing anything effectively, but it looks better. Mind you, there's nothing really, no solid punches are landing, but you know, he has his back to the rope, back to the rope, so it looks. Under 10 seconds to go in round number seven. Neither guy able to create any sort of distance on the inside, though. They're sort of smothering themselves, and that's been a problem for both guys when they get on the inside, not giving themselves enough room to land anything substantial. If you take a look at the highlights in round number seven, Broach kept the fight very close, but Vargas had his flurries. Vargas won the beginning of the round. Broach probably stole the ending. Was it enough to steal the entire round for you, Billy? Probably not. I think I think it may have just because I know how judges judges react. It's better to win the last part of the fight, the last part of the round than it is the beginning. Take a look at Leonard Hagler for proof of that. There you go. Vargas with more bleeding on the side of his coming out of his mouth a little bit there as well. There's some serious welting on the face of both guys, Billy. That Would you say that's a product of young fighters who don't yet know how to roll with punches? Because normally, through eight rounds, with a guy that doesn't have punching power, your face shouldn't look like that. Exactly. Tibor Broch definitely looking the worst for wear in this contest. But it's a very, very common and easy mistake to correct. If you can think of what I said earlier about taking that step to the right. See, now he's doing it. See how he's doing it now? He's moving away from Vargas's right hand because that's the punch that he's been hit with. But as he's jabbing and moving the way he's moving now, he's going to get hit with it. Go to, that, go to the, op the opposite way. Vargas just doesn't jab well enough for Gross to have to worry about that whatsoever. So moving to his right should be his prerogative. I mean, Gross, the punches he's been hit with have been the right hand of Vargas. And that step to the right, Billy, working wonders right now. And Broch missing his opportunities, though Vargas still landing a couple punches in that latest flurry. And Broch is moving his head a little bit now in that right hand. He's slipping, slipping in Vargas' right hand. Nice jab there, a couple jabs landing for Vargas. More open cuts, this time underneath the right eye of Tibor Broch. Thank you. 
See how he's slipping that right hand? This is round eight of ten. The Canadian welterweight title on the line. It's a welcome breather for Sam Vargas. He's looking heavy. Not only that, as you can see, Slugger. Tibor Broch is uh, breathing heavy as well. Both men right now feeling the effects of a solid eight rounds. And that blood, though, continuing to trickle down the face of Tibor Broch. And Vargas and Jones as well. For both men with battle wounds. I don't know that I've seen a Tibor Broch fight where he was not cut. I think that... You're right, you're right. Chris in the corner trying to time it at one, two. That's that's the key. Throw lots of right hands. He's not going to be able to slip him and, and move out of the way. Barge just keeps throwing that right hand. The volume has to be the key for Vargas, and there's a little bit more of what he has to be doing. I don't know that Broch has that knockout blow in his arsenal either, so if you want to throw... Neither of them do, but Vargas was landing a nice little left. That was a good left. Ten seconds to go in round number eight. And both men look like they have been engaged in a war, and that's exactly how they will end this battle right now in this eighth round. Swinging as they have in the last few rounds. That's a blood flying in our direction just a second ago there, Arda. We might have to play a little dodgeball with those. I wore black for a reason. Yeah. Billy, that may have been a tough round to score, but how'd you see it? I had Tibor winning that round. I have the fight even right now. Well, that makes things interesting going into the ninth round, but let's take a look at some highlights of the eighth, Corey. Yeah, a lot of flurries, more flurries on the inside, but Vargas tired very early on in this round. Again, the adjustment to the gloves is probably a welcome breather, but he never really recovered. Tibor's starting to get on the inside again, and, you know, we mentioned that he could make it easy on himself by jabbing. It's probably not in his mentality at this point in his career. He's just not going to do that, so if he's going to be rough and get on the inside, the best he can do, Billy, is position himself, step to the right, and then get on the inside. It's sort of an in-between, but it's better than what he was doing before, eating overhand rights. Exactly. The ninth round set to begin here in the Hershey Center. See how he's moving that way now? Staying away from that right hand, right to the body. Well, I tell you, from this vantage point, though, look at Tibor Broch's face. I know that this fight, Billy, you have it scored even, but if oh. people are looking at it aesthetically, Tibor Broch has been in an absolute war. Well, with a face like that, you do have to be concerned about a stoppage as well. You never know, and there have been no headbutts to speak of from Sammy Vargas. That might be a concern. It, it might then be. I to really pick up the pace for Broch if he can. Nice jab there from Tibor Broch. Yeah. The fans trying to rally behind Tibor Broch. Tibor, Tibor are the chants echoing inside the Hershey Center. And it seems to be lifting his spirits a little bit. He seems to be throwing a little more. Vargas looks to be wincing. He might have been caught with one of those body shots. And the fight goes to the ground, and he pulls guard. Well, it's, it's pure exhaustion, I think, for both these guys right now. And Vargas certainly, and that's probably the first dedicated body attack that Broch has mounted in this bout, and he's feeling the effects. A tired fighter is only going to amplify how much those shots, those lefts and rights are going to hurt. Broch unsure what's happening. Vargas uh, may be complaining about a headbutt again, as uh, he will now have the opportunity to sit down. Unsure exactly what's happening, but the ref is not calling out the fight yet. I believe he might be given time to recover here. He does have five minutes. This is a rather unconventional to take to the stool. It is. It's a little strange. And you see the Canadian kid with a cold 
uh, water bottle. And when, when this is boxing, it's professional boxing. Accidents happen, let them fight. You're not going to make any fans like no. this. This is, this is the kind of behavior that Bernard Hopkins exhibited against Roy Jones Jr. in the second time. You're not going to make any fans doing that. Now, you're not bringing that up because you have an affinity for Roy Jones. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a I call it straight down the middle. Right? <laughs> See, I don't like the fact what Tibor's doing now, moving to that left. He's good, he can get caught with that right. Okay, move back the other way. When he starts moving to the left, Samus has got to throw that right hand. Now, once again, we've seen this earlier where exhaustion has been playing a factor here or just that clinching. I mean, now this is a junior winner type situation that we're seeing all over again. 100%. The judges don't like it. The fans don't like it. Tibor's just got to just go forward and throw punches. Well, Tibor is not very happy right now. He's not as uh, patient as Victor Lupo as he is just throwing punches and he seems very frustrated from the look on his face right now. But Vargas himself, though, to his credit, still in this fight. Well, a bad knee doesn't help a tired fighter either. Because, you know, if it's oftentimes your leg strength that keeps you going when you're exhausted. And right now, Vargas really only has one leg to rely on, and that's his lead leg. So when there's pressure applied and he's hitting the canvas, it's almost understandable. Again, the late flurries come out as this round comes to a close. Well, it hasn't been pretty in the way of conventional boxing or conventional skill, but I think anyone in the crowd right now can appreciate a good brawl. You take a look at the action from round number nine, Corey. Again, Vargas looking exhausted, but I do like the fact that he seems to be getting desperate. He's throwing power shots. He's going for broke. Hitting the canvas, I mentioned, could be a result of that bad knee take the stool after the headbutt is a little bit unconventional, but clearly you saw in the pre-fight when he was staring down Tibor Broch, Vargas has no problem playing the bad guy, and sometimes boxing needs that. Your thoughts on the round, Billy? I had Tibor winning that round, cleaner punches. So then, I have him win in the last three rounds. According to you, then, this is a do-or-die round for Vargas. Definitely. So we're going to have to see what is left in the reserves as we are in our final round in this, a Canadian welterweight championship bout. And Tibor Broch, perhaps in the driver's seat. Both guys fighting like the fight is on the line. And they're probably right. Sammy Vargas perhaps one round away from his first professional loss. The 28-year-old Tibor Grosch, mighty, undefeated in seven, looking to extend that to eight. As we see, see him moving to his left, he's getting caught. Can't move that way. Well, the 10th round of a fight between guys who are at this stage of their careers. It's hey, another right be hand, another right hand. right hand. And Vargas, with a sense of desperation, throwing Hail Mary after Hail Mary. He's throwing lefts and rights combinations, and they seem to be landing. He got, he got a con, con with a couple in return, but he's definitely he's winning, to, winning this round so far. And this is the culmination of what really this fight was. It was a war of attrition between two guys. They don't really have... There you go. They don't really have the well of skill to, to tap into. Nice shot there by Vargas. Hits Broch flush on the chin, and he doesn't look to relent at all as he continues on. And Broch looking to cling on in desperation there to stop the onslaught, but he turns the fight around. As Vargas continues to swing with all that he has, and Broch now with some counters. For both guys right now, the problem is that they're getting tired before the other guy can actually get hurt, and then they manage to turn it around. Good for the fans, but... Good for the fans. Well, that's what the fans came here to see, an exciting tilt, and that's exactly what they're getting in this 10th round between Vargas and Groshen once again, though. Vargas hitting the mat. And that is not winning him any fans, especially what we saw earlier on this night. But for Vargas, it's also not losing a point, so if he can buy seven seconds, I can understand his mentality that it, if you assume he's doing it on purpose. Grosh again looking for that headbutt. 
I saw Vargas actually return the favor, jumped up a little bit with his shoulder. Under 30 seconds to go, Vargas landing shots, lefts and rights, and Grosso holding his own. As this one may very well go to the judges' scorecards. What a way to end a fight as the fans are on their feet. Sammy Vargas and Tibor Broch will go to the judges' scorecards, and my goodness, that was a way to end a fight, much to the fans' delight. Billy, both men, particularly Vargas, a sense of desperation in that last round. How do you have the fight? You're signing it up now. I got a five rounds apiece. You got it a draw. I have it a draw. We're going to have to see if that's the case as we take a look at the replays, Billy. Sammy Vargas definitely can't deny the fact oh, that he no, came in with a sense of desperation. Definitely won that last round. Big. As you see shot after shot, Sammy Vargas landing more volume punches. Even though they may not have been the hardest shots, they definitely were aesthetically appealing to those here in the Hershey Center. As he just kept going like the Energizer Bunny, shot after shot after shot. Tibor Broch, though, to his credit, landing a few of his own after getting rocked there. As you can see, his head tilted back there for a moment. Yeah, he took some serious shots that round. I have a 95-95. We're going to have to wait and see what the judges have it. This an all-important fight for both men. Tibor Broch currently 6-3-4. Sammy Vargas 7-0. Oh. What a fight we just witnessed between these two warriors. And all the... Grounding aside, the uh, falling to the ground of Sammy Vargas aside still showed a lot of heart in this fight, as did Tibor Broch. Both men a lot to be proud of in this fight. We'll have to see what the judges have to say about this. But Vargas playing to the crowd now, and he's won a few fans inside the Hershey Center, despite the fact that we started off as a pro Tibor Broch crowd. His brother is in his corner, Jason. And of course, Mr. Coffey. Chris Johnson, a fellow Olympian with Billy Irwin in the corner of Vargas, as is the Canadian kid, Steve Molitor. And the judge is still deliberating. Working on those final tallies as Tibor now gets the approval from the audience. Very close fight, Billy. It was a very close fight indeed. Very close. All right, Tibor winning the seven, eight, ninth round. Sam came on in the end, pulled it out. Let's Logan. go inside the ring. Tom Triber has our official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Alan Davis scores it 96 to 94 in favor of Vardagas. <laughs> Judge William Boudhu scores it 95 to 95, even a draw. And Judge Kelly Zolnierczak scores it 95 to 95, even this bout is a majority draw. Well, how about that? Two of the three judges agree with the kid, and you had it right on the money, Billy. Good fight. Let's send it upstairs to Corey Erdman, who's with Broch. Corey Erdman here with Tibor Broch. And Tibor, you're still the lineal Canadian welterweight champion. You had a lot to overcome, a lot of swelling, a lot of cuts. How did you manage to get through it? I, you know, I got through it. I got, I got God on my side, you know, and uh, I just want to give all praises to God. 
God and glory, Jesus Christ. Nobody in here was hurt. It was a good, tough fight. Sammy fought a great fight, and uh, looks like we're gonna have to do it again. So you're looking for the rematch. One of the keys in this fight, though, is when you move to your right, you found a home for that right hand. Was, was that yeah. becoming more evident as the fight went on? Yeah, absolutely. I, I felt like I was working pretty good, hitting the body real good, mixing it up. I didn't, uh, I didn't use my feet as good as I wanted to, but uh, it was a very close, tough fight. I gave all praises to Sammy. He, did, he fought a great fight. Now, we assume that if we have a rematch, it's probably going to be a war once again, but what oh, would you absolutely. do differently? Uh, you know, I'd like to box a little more, use my jab a little more, uh, be a little bit more safe. Sammy's a big guy, and, uh, you know, you got to give him his respects. He can punch, and he's strong. Tibor, thank you very much. Arda, Billy, back to you.